Hey folks, we're at DCAmerica.com here, and today I've got a bit of an unusual morning, mostly because hell has frozen over. Uh, yes, that's right, you read the title in the thumbnail, there is now Amp Plus on Polar Wearables. The wearables is a bit of a complex term. Technically, we wear this stuff, so it's wearables, um, but maybe not all the wearables you're thinking. So let's kind of run through it. This, though, is about the Polar OH-1 Plus. Uh, now, if you're wondering about the Polar OH-1, then you can copy everything I'm saying from the OH-1 to the OH-1 Plus because they're the exact same unit minus the thing I'm about to tell you. This is the contents of the Polar OH-1 Plus box. Uh, I say contents because they didn't have the actual final box yet, but they had all the final parts, and so I got it sent in a little plastic baggie. Um, and what you'll notice is these two things on this side over here. Uh, these are swimming clips, and they basically clip on your goggles. I'll show that in just a second. Whereas the regular OH-1 is this stuff here. So it's the armband, the charging, and the pod. Um, the good news is the firmware is identical between the two of them. The internals are identical. All the stuff that you care about is identical, unless you're a swimmer, in which case you don't get the little pod pieces there for the clips. But you can call Polar uh, customer support and they say they will help you out. Uh, so to kind of walk through these contents really quickly here, you've got an armband strap. This just simply slides on your arm and I'll show you that in a moment. This is the optical heart rate sensor itself. So if we look right there, uh, if I go in on the back, I turn it on using the button on the side right there. And then on this side, there's a little LED, status LED. And then here are the optical uh, lights and sensors that go ahead and measure blood flow and turn your heart rate. Um, you will notice the important part, which is right there. There's that little Amplus logo right next to the Bluetooth Smart logo. Uh, then you have here, this is the charging cradle dock, sync cradle dock. Just stick it in uh, any USB port you find out there to charge, or if you put it into a computer with the Polar Flow Sync uh, app on there, it'll go ahead and synchronize to the Polar website. You can also use your smartphone, so you don't actually have to use a computer if you don't want to, but it's nice to have that, that option there. And that's actually something different compared to some of their competitors. Uh, so I'm gonna turn this off for the moment here. Next, you have these two swim clips right here. Uh, these are designed to go on your goggles. So here's a pair of goggles right here. Uh, you go ahead and you pop the pod in there like this. Um, and I'm not really sure why they give two. I think it's because one is just a little bit different uh, from a security standpoint. Uh, this one feels a little more secure to me, uh, but maybe there's scenarios where you want one or the other. Either way, you pop it in and then you just go ahead and slide it over your goggles like such, such. Come on, go in your home. There you go, like that. And then it would just go ahead and be up here on your temple, roughly like that. Um, more like this, I guess. Uh, so anyways, the point being there being that that's actually a really good place for optical heart rate. Uh, and the reason is that when it comes to swimming, if you're swimming like this and you have the uh, band on your arm, it's hitting the water every single time. And for optical heart rate uh, in particular, it's trying to figure out what's like motion artifacts and what is your pulse. And if you think about like banging on a table, um, that's a really loud sound and it's a loud thing for this to figure out compared to your heart rate, which is also making uh, that same sort of uh, rhythm to it. So anything you can do to remove that kind of rhythm as a motion artifact, whether it be um, when you're running or whatnot, helps optical heart rate accuracy. And it's actually true as well for chest straps also, by the way. So uh, it's kind of the same concept there on both of those. So. For swimmers, not a bad little spot there. Again, if you have an existing OH-1, uh, Polar says you can hit up their customer support teams and they'll figure this out. I'm not sure if they're gonna charge you like a dollar or if they're just gonna be like, good on you for buying Polar. Uh, so this is what comes in the box. We'll move this out of the way here. And let's talk about kind of the pairing process and, and how that works. Okay, so Polar actually has two apps. They have one called Polar Beat and Polar Flow. Uh, Polar Beat is where you would like record workouts versus Polar Flow is where you would synchronize stuff and look at your training logs and all that kind of jazz. This unit here synchronizes to both of them now, which is a bit of a change. In the past, it only synchronized to Polar Flow. Now it goes to Beat and Flow. Uh, and the reason that you want to use Flow, the reason why I use Flow anyways, is that's how I get the data off of this. Uh, and so this broadcasts out on Amp Plus now, as well as Bluetooth Smart, um, but it also can save data on it. So the way it works, if I go ahead and, let me just move this way so it's not too bright for there. On this button here, I'm gonna press that twice in a second, and you will see this little light there blink twice. So here we go. There we go, now it is recording. Uh, and so this allows me to wear it here, 
go ahead and do some activity where I may not have a watch with me. Uh, for example, swimming, if I were to go swimming with this, whether it's here or here or wherever, it's not gonna be able to transmit that data to the watch because uh, for AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart signal underwater, it's just a couple centimeters. Whereas if you had an analog signal like the Polar H10 has, uh, that allows it to go through water without any issue. Uh, so this allows you to save the workout data onto this. And when you're done, you power it off. So I just go ahead and power it off like this. That will automatically save the data. There we go. And then when I power it back on now, what will happen is you will see that this will synchronize there in the background. So in just a second, a little thing will come up in the lower or upper left-hand corner there. And that says it's now synchronizing that data. It pulls it off uh, and then you're good to go. And there we go right there you can see it boom synchronizing right there uh, so it's super super quick super efficient and this is the one of the things i actually like most about this sensor compared to like the skosh 24 um, rhythm 24 is that this is just super clean and just works every time behind the scenes versus the rhythm 24 you gotta like manually do it and then if it's just kind of clumsy i um, also like the fact that i can plug this into my computer and get the same sort of thing as well there uh, i can't do that on the rhythm 24. so what about broadcasting of course that's really the big one here for this optical heart rate sensor uh, the fact that it can now broadcast to uh, garmin via amp plus as well as existing sensors uh, via existing devices via bluetooth smart so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna close out the polar app here on my phone and the reason why I'm doing that, and I'm actually setting my phone to Bluetooth off, uh, is that on uh, this device here, it can only have one concurrent connection uh, versus the H10 can actually have two concurrent Bluetooth smart connections. Uh, the, both devices have unlimited AMP Plus connections and you can use it at the same time between AMP Plus and Bluetooth smart. So I've got it powered on here. I'm gonna put it in the little uh, strap right there and slide this onto my arm. This is really my only complaint, actually I have two complaints about this whole setup right here. Um, technically I put it backwards by the way because the button should be facing away from me so I can see the status light. It doesn't matter from an accuracy standpoint or anything though. Um, this will flip over really easily like this, especially like uh, trying to get on our wetsuits and stuff like that. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, that's where the, both the Skosh and the Wahoos uh, ticker fit are a little bit nicer because they're bigger, which I know sounds counterintuitive, but practically speaking, it's actually more useful to be a little bit bigger and not flip over so easily. Uh, the second issue I have with this is that you saw me do the double tap to start recording. Uh, the problem is that sometimes like if you're in a wetsuit and you're trying to figure out like, is that, is that on? Is that not on? If just, you know, winter clothing, like I was out riding yesterday, it's the same sort of thing. It's kind of messy. I wish there was a way for me to just tap the button once and then show me a different color LED that it is recording. For example, like a red color or purple or any other color really um, would be handy. And I talked to Paul a little bit about that and they said that maybe that's something they'll consider. So here is uh, the Garmin right there. I'm gonna go ahead and just do into pairing mode. So down to sensors and show you over AMP+. Plus. This is a Garmin Edge 520 Plus, which means it does not have any sort of Bluetooth Smart uh, sensor capability. It can sync to your phone via Bluetooth Smart, but it can't connect to any sensors. Uh, so only works over AMP+, Plus. So that kind of proves that it's gonna see the AMP+, Plus side of things. Down to heart rate, and there we go. Right there, that is my heart rate, ID number 37424. Uh, and I can go in here, in fact, open this up. I can rename it to like OH1 if I want to. Click sensor details, click about, and right there, manufacturer ID, that is Polar's manufacturer ID of 123. Garmin's manufacturer ID is number one since they own Dynastream. And I think like Power Taps is number nine and uh, Stages is number 69. And all, I mean, I don't know all of them. But I just know those four because I've done this video three times now. Uh, so there is AMP Plus working. Here is Bluetooth Smart to see this concurrently. I'm gonna turn on Bluetooth Smart on my iPad there and go ahead and click on Power Source. I've got to wait for a trainer here to wake up. There we go. And I'm gonna go on to heart rate, and there you go, right there. The Polar OH1, there we go. Polar OH1 is concurrently showing that uh, at 72 beats per minute. If I go back here into my ride and just start a, a random ride real quick, there we go, 76 and 75. You're gonna see them within you know a beat or two, generally just because of latency and stuff like that. Uh, so that's that, it just works great. I've been using it for a while now, both on the firmware update of the existing Polar OH1, uh, which just to kind of show that to you, here is the OH1, here is the OH1 Plus. Uh, Polar says they are identical internally. Uh, and the only difference is that the OH1 Plus has the AMP Plus logo on the outside of it versus the OH1 does not. 
The OH1 will be getting a firmware update. Uh, Polar is singing springtime for that. I suspect that'll be pretty darn soon because of the fact that I'm already testing out the firmware on this one, uh, on the older one. Uh, so pretty much no issues with either of them, uh, certainly from an accuracy standpoint. Uh, I saw a couple of dropouts at one point on uh, the firmware update for this unit here, the, the OH1. I have not seen any dropouts whatsoever the OH1+. Plus. Uh, again, there's probably a lot of nuances there to the firmware update process on the old one that will probably stabilize over the next little while. But for the OH1+, Plus, it's looking great. And even this one, again, I've seen like three drops in the course of I don't know, a bunch of rides and runs. So not really the end of the world there. Uh, a couple things on the H10 that I wanted to talk about very briefly. Uh, so this strap also gets the Amp Plus update as well. Uh, and Polar is gonna start shipping the H10 with Amp Plus out of the box starting tomorrow. And also the OH1 Plus is available basically like today, tomorrow as well. But the H10 is actually interesting because what that means is that it has four different signal potentials. Uh, number one has unlimited AMP plus connections to it. Then it has two Bluetooth smart connections to it. So uh, you can pair it once to Zwift on an iPad and then a second time to like a Polar Vantage watch over Bluetooth smart. And then it has three, the analog signal that can be used underwater. Though admittedly not with the Polar Vantage watches, only with uh, Polar's older watches. But still, this is without question the most capable heart rate strap on the market in terms of signals. Um, also, it can store workout data onto it as well. Uh, so you can go ahead and do the same thing as the OH1 uh, can in terms of storing data, though it's a lot clunkier to be honest, the way it works. I wish Polar would just moved to what like Wahoo does where you put it on, it just starts recording every time and you can synchronize it later. Versus this one, you have to use a phone to start it. It's, it's clunky as AF basically. Um, so, there's that. So we've talked about that. We've talked about this. We've talked about that. Uh, accuracy wise for this, I put an entire accuracy section together in my in-depth review linked in the description down there. Uh, it's fine. Like that's the, the really short version of that. It's, it's one of the best, if not the best optical heart rate sensors out there that I've seen across the board. Uh, it's really, really good. In all of my accuracy data that I could find over the last like couple months in using both of these sensors together, um, there's like one blip, literally one blip. Um, so it's really good. Uh, again, if you want to see all that down there, I'm probably showing you some screens right now on the, on the accuracy there, which leaves this Polar Vantage series. Will it get AMP plus? Maybe, maybe. So I asked Polar that I said, uh, what's the deal? Are you going to, are you going to do AMP plus on this or not? Um, because the reason why these and this all got AMP plus is that it uses the same Nordic chipset and it uses the same Nordic chipset that everyone else in the industry uses. That's dual AMP plus and Bluetooth smart. Uh, the chipset, when, they, when you buy it from Nordic, basically has three modes in it that you can enable via software license. So number one is AMP plus only, number two is Bluetooth smart only, and number three is dual. Uh, so companies just choose which one they want, and if they wanna change it on the road later on, they can do that super, super easy. And that's a chipset in this stuff and in this and in this too. So Polar did confirm it contains that capability and they did say they are looking into the possibility of being able to do a firmware update uh, for this to enable AMP+. They're not committing to timelines, they're not committing to whether or not they'll even do that, um, but they are looking into the possibility of it. Uh, so that is really positive. I think that would be a big thing for this. Uh, I would expect if they were to do that, they'd probably start off with doing like heart rate, cycling uh, cadence sensors, and maybe cycling power meters and stuff like that. So really basic stuff, probably foot pods as well. Uh, so hopefully we'll see that happen. Again, no idea when. Uh, I just, just hope it's soon if they're gonna do that. Anyways, if you found this interesting, whack that like button bomb there. It really helps with the channel quite a bit here. Or hit the subscribe button. There is plenty more good sports technology goodness, I guess two goods in one, one in a row there, um, over the next five to six weeks, especially into April, uh, with Sea Otter coming up in mid-April. Boston Marathon also tends to be an event that we see some running stuff usually leak out of. Uh, so whack subscribe if you won't miss any of that stuff. Have a good one.